Seven years ago today, 17 and a half million people voted for Britain's exit from the political bloc known as the European Union. It was a result that surprised many, not least the media, corporate and political establishments, who had focused all of their energies on the Remain cause, with the likes of George Osborne predicting Armageddon if we left. Well, it didn't happen. After a sustained effort by undemocratic Remainers to reverse the decision, not least the cervix-free leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, who pushed for a second referendum, another example of his catastrophically bad judgment, we ultimately got Brexit across the line. We're out. Now, there have been problems. EU nationals who have perfectly good grounds to live here going through visa hell. Small businesses in particular dealing with a quagmire of paperwork, many of whom are giving up exporting altogether. This is a problem. A possible impact on economic growth and continued friction on trade and the passage of goods. But what do you expect when we have exited a political and economic union that we've been part of for over four decades? It's ridiculous to judge Brexit so soon. But even if you do make an appraisal of Brexit right now, today, tonight, on this show, the case for our departure grows ever stronger. And I say that as someone who voted Remain, but unfashionably accepted the result and decided to embrace it. We acted unilaterally on the vaccine rollout whilst the European Commission's Ursula von der Leyen threatened to blockade supplies to the UK and even threatened erecting a hard border between Northern Ireland and the Republic. Whilst net migration is at unsustainably high levels, it would be immeasurably higher if we still had free movement. It would be a million, maybe a million and a half every year. Who knows? Brexit was an immediate insurance policy against ever closer union and effectively becoming a member state of the United States of Europe. The EU, through ideology and economic necessity, is fast becoming a federalist superpower. Even most Remainers wouldn't want to be part of that. Brexit was an immediate insurance policy against a single European army. Look how the EU dithered and delayed over Ukraine. Brexit is an end to payments of £2 billion a month, which over two decades amounts to the entire cost of the pandemic. We've also saved a one-off cost of almost £200 billion, which would have been our contribution to the EU's disastrous overreaction to COVID. So that number on the side of the bus wasn't true. It's much higher, in fact. Brexit is an insurance policy against a hellish pandemic treaty that the EU are currently drawing up, which would enforce draconian lockdowns Europe-wide in the events of a future pandemic. Outside of the EU, we can do with Sweden, who have now clearly won the argument on pandemic measures. No lockdowns, no mask mandates and the lowest pandemic deaths since 2020. Brexit has given us the ability to trade with the rest of the world, including the CPTPP, which I thought was a medicine for a sore throat, but is in fact a trading bloc larger than the whole of the EU, made up of fast-rising economies, not those in gradual decline like on the continent. Plus, people forget to mention this, but we do have tra tariff-free trade with the EU as well. That's right. It turns out we're still trading with the EU very successfully. Who knew? Brexit enabled the unprecedented AUKUS deal on nuclear subs with Australia and the United States, something we wouldn't have had a cat's in hell chance of agreeing if we were still in the bloc. Brexit has been an immediate insurance policy against the euro, a hellish one-size-fits-all currency which favours the likes of Germany and which punishes the likes of Italy. Yes, we are in the mother of all messes at the moment economically, but we can pull all the levers that we need to in our own national interest without having to consult 27 other economies. And let's talk about the economy. The UK enjoyed the highest growth in the G7 for the last two years, and despite the profits of doom at the IMF, Britain didn't have a year-long recession. In fact, we have avoided recession altogether. Meanwhile, both Germany and the Eurozone are in recession. And they didn't have Brexit. Funny that. 
It's early days for Brexit. This country is taking baby steps with its newfound independence. And yes, plenty of Brexiteers would like to see a bolder approach, the restoration of Northern Ireland's integrity as part of the UK, and more Brexit benefits. But I believe that will come. Brexit was about sovereignty, absolutely. But it was about democracy, too. And as Remain voices tried for years to reverse or dilute the decision, I genuinely feared for civil order in this country. Thank God those seeking to reverse Brexit did not prevail. And they must not prevail in the future, including under a Labour government who speak terrifyingly of reconnecting with Brussels. Brexit is not perfect. It's a work in progress. But the case for our political, diplomatic and economic independence grows by the day. The people we were told were stupid for voting for it were not so stupid after all. Brexit is a challenge, a conundrum and a puzzle. But it's a gift too, one which I believe will keep on giving.